fathers, fathers, fathers after them believed this, that Jesus Christ rose again. If you, if you commute to Mecca and you look into the tomb of Muhammad, he is still there. If you go to the tomb of Buddha, he is still there. If you go to uh, Washington, D.C., you can find where they lay George Washington. But if you go to the tomb where Jesus Christ was laid on Friday, he's no longer there. Can you say amen? Woo! This is more important to me than Christmas because everybody's born and everybody dies. But only one was rose from the dead on the third day. See, he on the third day. I want to talk to you for just a moment. The title of my sermon this afternoon is The Autopsy of Jesus Christ. The Autopsy of Jesus Christ. Uh, there is a nursery in the back there if you want to send your kids to the nursery. But uh, the, the Sunday school kids, uh, stay seated. And the teenagers, stay seated. This is too good to pass up. Amen? If you watch any of the good detective movies, they go and they'll find a dead body in a field somewhere or a back alley. And they'll bring in the investigator and the investigator will begin to examine the body. The inv and the investigator will begin to say, look at the wrists. They've been tied by something. They look at the mouth. Uh, their mouth was taped shut. And after the, the inspector examines the body, they take the body to the morgue. And then the morgue, he, he, he investigates it and tries to identify the cause of death. Come on. Today I want to know the cause of death. And I want to know why they whooped his back. I want to know why that there were, finger, uh, there were holes in his hand. I want to know why that he bled from his knees. I want to know why he bled from his head. I want to investigate today and I want to perform the autopsy of Jesus Christ. I want to read just one scripture. Can, can I get, uh, see, Brother Chris and, and AJ or Darren or somebody up here to help me? Okay. I want you to hold this up. And I want you to hold this up. And I want you to kiss me right there. As I stand next to me. Look at how buff my Jesus is. <laughs> my God. He probably did like a thousand push-ups every night before he prayed. But he didn't do legs, man. I don't know. I don't. don't look at that. Don't look at the legs. <laughs> All right. The autopsy of Jesus Christ. Didn't say I was an artist. I said I was a preacher. <laughs> Let my preaching bless you, not my art. I do like three Jesuses, man. I, just, I had to keep throwing them away, man. I saw them, man. <laughs> All right. The Autopsy of Jesus Christ, book of John, chapter 20. Book of John, chapter 20, verse 24. We're going to go through the seven, the seven identifiers of the cause of death of Jesus Christ. Check this out. 24. Now Thomas called, or now Thomas, the one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Now this is after Jesus has resurrected from the dead. This is after Jesus has come out of the tomb. He has shown himself to some of the disciples. He has shown himself to some uh, uh, of his followers, and yet he hasn't shown himself to Thomas. And here we are seeing what happens when Thomas finally sees Jesus after he is resurrected. Now, Thomas was not with Jesus when he came. So when, uh, verse 25, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. This is after he resurrected. Now he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with, was, was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See, my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. 
Now this is for you today. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come closer. Each of you take a step over. Now watch this. I want to thank Brother Chris. He took me to buy a pair of glasses yesterday. And they didn't have them ready. We thought it was one hour thing and it's going to take a week to ten days, but I got contact fee. Can you see them? No. <laughs> I can see them. I'm one of those guys, I got to believe it. You know what I mean? I got to see it to believe it. I was in the mirror like this, like, I can't see the contact in there. <laughs> you don't know how many times I came to church with one contact and went home to change and it was dried out on the sink. <laughs> so I thought I had two in. <laughs> Hitting squirrels on the left, but missing squirrels on the right. <laughs> Number one, if we were performing an autopsy of Jesus Christ after the crucifixion, we would notice that his head, he was bleeding from his head. He was bleeding from his head. We have to wonder why, and we have to ask why, Jesus was bleeding from his head. Why would Jesus bleed from his head? See, why would Jesus bleed from his head? Here we are examining the body, and we notice that Jesus' head is bleeding. And I wonder why Jesus is bleeding from his head. And then I notice that Jesus has been bleeding from his from his beard. He, he's been bleeding, bleeding from his face. Just put it there to the side. He's bleeding from his face. And we're examining the body, if you can imagine how real it is to be bleeding from your head. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that his sweat was blood. He was sweating blood, and he was sweating blood, and he was sweating blood. The people, the scientists today say it's because his flesh wanted him to change his mind. But his mind refused to change, and as he battled with his mind, he began to bleed. crown of thorns were laid upon him and we know that they flicked out his beard and he, I got me like something going, like a patchy, like a, like a 1970 kind of what is going on there thing and, 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 and you know, I mean you, you try to pull that, man, I'm gonna bite your finger off, amen they plucked his beard and then we notice talking about his beard, his head, his hands. And oh man, I got to get shoes. I won't take my socks off, y'all, because there might be sensitive viewers. <laughs> but we notice that there is blood coming from his feet. Man, I looked for two hours for these socks. I'm just not even. Can I talk? Thank you. <laughs> Can you see the blood? You notice. As we are performing the autopsy, we notice that there is blood on his feet and there is blood on his hands. Follow me. Now, Thomas begins to give us a reality of what Jesus looked like after the crucifixion. Thomas begins to say, I must stick my finger in the hole in your hand. I must put my finger in your side. Thomas is beginning to describe to us then, he is an eyewitness of the account that took place on Calvary. He is an eyewitness of the account 
after the resurrection. Any time you are a good investigator, if you are a good investigator, you will go and you will talk to the witnesses. And you will have the witnesses give you a report. Now because this suit was given to me, and because I love it so much and look like that uh, tattoo from Fantasy Island in it, I'm not going to put my marker on my knee. But there is blood coming from the knees of Jesus Christ. And I want to know why Jesus bled from his knees. If you would hold this. We then begin to realize that Jesus bled from his back. Unfortunately, I did not get a back shot of Jesus because the front was hard enough to draw. <laughs> we notice there is blood coming off the back of Jesus Christ. The Bible says 39 stripes. You know why it's not 40? Because only a dead man gets 40 stripes. If he was to die on the Roman post, they say that 39 is the number of mercy. They show him mercy by only whooping him 39 times. The Bible says that by his stripes we are what? You know why? Because every disease comes down to the number 39. You can have cancer, bone cancer. You can have uh, liver cancer. You can have stomach cancer, but it's still cancer. That's one. You can have a blood disease or a blood infection or not enough white blood cells or too many red blood cells, but it's still a blood disease. That's two. Every disease comes down to 39 major categories. 39 major categories. God put stripes upon his son's back so that he would cover every major disease that man could come up with. It all comes down to a stripe. The Bible says that the soldier took, took the sword and pierced him in the side, and blood and water flowed. Blood and water flows. It's called the, the cardiac sac. It is water that surrounds your heart to lubricate it because it beats so many times. So when the soldier pierced, Remember when Jesus was, now we're investigating now, we're doing an autopsy here. His tongue is swollen. His tongue is swollen. Remember, remember when he asked for something to drink? Do you know why Jesus asked for something to drink? Because he was bleeding out. He was dying. He was dying and he was dehydrated. Because blood takes water, H2O, to your muscles, and he began to cramp in his muscles, and he was dehydrating. And he said, give me something to drink, because the blood is not doing its job. It's leaking out of my body, and I'm dehydrating. And they gave him sour wine. And his tongue swelled up so big, he couldn't talk at a time. The Bible says that, that not one bone was broken. Do you know why not one bone was broken? Because if Jesus would have had one bone broken, he would have been an unworthy sacrifice. When they bring the lamb to atone for our sins, he must be perfect. He must be white as snow. He can't have any type of heir to him. He can't be blind. He can't be crippled. He can't he can't have uh, his fur messed up. He can't have broken bones. He has to be perfect. Born on this earth. So now we have Jesus' body laid before us, and we realize then the spots from which he was bleeding. And now that I know what the cause of death is, I want to know why. moment an investigator gets to a murder scene and realizes that the victim has been stabbed to death, they immediately believe it was somebody they knew because to stab